Singapore is a city in constant flux. But this story isn't about the busy office workers. Hello, morning. Or the harried commuters. 95. This story Hi, is about the invisible people that keep us going and make sure the city is in order. To tell you their stories, we spent months with people that most of us wouldn't take a second look at. They do jobs that are crucial, but thankless. They don't acknowledge us. We just, you know, just walk off. In this episode, for the first time, the Esso station that pump attendant Yasin works at encounters an unexpected pump malfunction. First time with this problem. And Yasin has to handle the irate customers. Sorry, eh? Meanwhile, <laughs> rookie bus captain, 23-year-old Benjamin, is left in charge of the main office in Tempenis Bus Interchange. and faces off with a senior. Good afternoon, sir. Supreme Pertang. At 77, Yasin is still working. Because he needs the income to support his wife and mentally disabled child. Yasin has been a pump attendant at Esso for the last 15 years. Thank you. Why is the only $50? The customer wants full tank, but they stop $50. I don't know, maybe they price first. Who put the $50? I never price. Full tank, full tank. Okay, one more time, huh? Okay? Being a pump attendant isn't just about loading cars with fuel. At ESSO, attendants have to attend safety training sessions at SCDF once every two years. Any emergency, emergency switch, get a, get a emergency cut off switch, everything cut off. Buka ni satu ketarik, belakang press. He knows all the station's protocol like the back of his hand, from how to put out a small fire to what to do in the event of an oil spill. In case fire, in case oil spin, what are you going to do? They say. They semua dalam ada. Jadi kita atau bila minyak tumpah kita mana tu tengok macam mana. Kalau curam sana kita ambil sebelah sana. Kalau curam sini, kita ambil sebelah sini. Kita kalau boleh kontrol, kita kontrol. Kalau dah terlampu banyak minyak sangat, kita mesti nak call 995. But today, there's a spanner in the works. Kalau terjadi apa-apa, apa yang nak bikin? Lekas-lekas bikin. Yasin is going to encounter something he's never faced in 15 years. I cannot pump now. This is cannot pump now. Uh... Even in an unexpected pump malfunction, Yasin has to maintain the service levels and minimize impact on customers. Anything wrong, I must put on the board, okay? You need to finish, you cannot pump. What the f***, man? Customers are irate. The trained team leader and his colleagues have to find a solution quickly. No, no, just only, just only for this problem. No, only, only. You go back, go back first. Huh? Next time you come. Like... This is the first time the diesel supply is mysteriously cut off. 
No, no, no cannot come. So direct all the cars to Sumbawang. All those diesel clear customers. All to Sumbawang. Mm. They redirect customers to another pump station five minutes away. You go to the other station, it's all up. Huh? Thank you very much. Sorry, yeah, sir. Yasin and his team strive to get drivers fueled up and back on the road. Hey, Before long, they managed to return the pumps to normal. Yasin has managed to get the show back on the road, despite an unexpected pump malfunction. While 23-year-old Benjamin Lim is pushed to the limits, while training to handle a new scope to the job. This is the passenger service office. The central office and the busiest part of the interchange. Here, savvy bus captains need to juggle passenger queries while making sure buses are run like clockwork. Block 824, huh? Today, 23-year-old bus captain Benjamin Lim won't be out driving buses. He has been assigned to the passenger service office. 65. 65 Somerset. One part of the job he has recently begun training for... I, I go Jurong Yes. MRT. Yeah, bus, bus. No bus here. No bus here. No bus here. Okay, Ironically, route knowledge is even more crucial in here than it is on the road. At any time, Benjamin could be queried on any of the 21 services that SPS runs from this interchange. The best is take the bus 46. Uh, you can check with the driver. Yes. Not everyone is appointed to the passenger service office. The job requires good communication, extensive route knowledge, and quick thinking. Within a year, Benjamin put in his request to rotate into this office. He spends about three days a week here. The rest of the week, he drives. Actually, the best is balance. So we can learn from two sides, rather than one side. The bus now want to depart already. Actually, the passenger service also have their pressures or any problems. Ah. Two p.m. The busiest time of the day. So la. The busy period is where we are changing shift from morning to the afternoon shift. Hey, Benjamin has to facilitate the handover of duties from the 240 drivers that come in from their morning drives to the afternoon shift that is set to take over. This change of shift needs to be an invisible process. No bus service should be affected. It usually happens without a hitch. Until a driver fails to show up. At the Tempinis interchange, the afternoon shift is already beginning. But one of the bus captains has not reported to work. It's too late to find a replacement. Yet, 
buses need to run on time no matter what, or the team risk incurring the ire of waiting passengers. Benjamin has to find a solution. Fast. Because the driver and the bus that she is supposed to bring to Tempinis Interchange have not arrived. Benjamin has to go through the roster to see who might be able to collect the bus and cover the route. With minutes to go, he finds a replacement driver. After a nerve-wracking half hour, Benjamin manages to find another driver to replace the absent bus captain. Just as Benjamin finishes fighting one fire, Bus captain Tan Ting Wan has called the passenger service office, complaining that his bus is stuck at the interchange and unable to move. Buses are timed precisely to the minute, and if the driver doesn't move off, he will cause a domino delay down the line all along the service's entire schedule. The bus isn't the only thing on a break. Every interchange has a resident mechanic on call to fix broken down buses. And the one at Tempinis Interchange has gone for a lunch break. Where nobody can check the buses, that's the challenging part. But the bus is already running 10 minutes late. Benjamin wants to find out if the bus's tanks are really empty or if the problem is something else. The bus is clearly fueled up and ready to roll. Despite what the senior bus captain claims. Benjamin has resolved a potential bus delay, even if it meant running into conflict with a senior colleague. I will try to talk with them. If any problem, we just work it out and see what is the problem. When he is not at work, 46-year-old restaurant manager Saravanan spends the time at home with his mother. Saravanan's mother used to be more active. But her health took a turn for the worse four months ago. 
Recently, she got a pain in the stomach. Uh, a doctor told us that she needed to have an operation because I think inside the stomach, the intestine, is it? Uh, it's a bit burst out. Sarah Vanan's mother suffers from fluid overload, a condition where there's too much fluid in the blood. The doctor recommends surgery, but Sarah Vanan's mother is underweight. His sister-in-law, Jaya, the main caregiver, is concerned. Saravana needs to make a decision together with his brother and sister-in-law on what's best for his mother. But duty calls before they come to a verdict. Hello. Is it? Yes, boss. Yeah, I get for you. Any small, any small plate? Okay. Happy when I see customers. Even um, you got a lot of problems at home. Maybe you come to work when you see the customers, or maybe you see your colleagues. You will feel happy. Pasal lah, no time media. Alamak, ask me some things. This one, this one, this one, this one. I'm not in the mood. Sweet old Tenzin. Thank you. Have a good day. Although Saravanan will be on his feet for the next eight hours, so it'll be thirty-five, sixty, yeah, less. But it's only preming, sorry, actually. Can I? At least he won't have to deal with the dilemma at home. Good afternoon. Okay. So this afternoon we are going to learn two machine. Okay. Do. Seventy-five-year-old Fatima Hussein is struggling to keep up with her job as a cleaner at Academia, the research wing of Singapore General Hospital. Easy, yeah. Ah, very easy. Okay. Although she's done it for over 40 years, advances in cleaning technology has made her job a lot more challenging. Why we are using machine so that we can increase the productivity. That's why you must know how to handle these two machine. Number satu, belum ah? Okay, number satu ini turun, turun dulu. Besar kan? Macam ini, tu besar besar tinggi mana boleh tu? Tali pegang itu. Tapi lagi juga itu belajar. Tekan ke depan jalan, depan. Okay, good. Today, Fatima is learning to use the baby scrubber. The baby scrubber is able to mop and simultaneously dry the floor. Because the machine has wheels, all Fatima has to do is walk and guide it along as it does the cleaning. But the baby scrubber is a big struggle for Fatima's 75-year-old frame. Boleh tekan ke bawah, tekan ke bawah. Okay, kemudian sini angkat. Okay, okay boleh ha? Okay, okay. This is compulsory for this machine. Okay, you all must know how to handle. Okay, semua kena tahu macam mana pakai. Okay. Fatima cannot fall behind. Many others could take her place. And Fatima needs the job. <coughs> this is the reason Fatima needs to keep her job. She and her 55-year-old son live in this one-room rental flat. Abdul Salam doesn't work because he is handicapped and can have seizures at any moment.
panas tak? Nubila minum. Saya <laughs> suka. Uh, mak jaga anak, bukan anak jaga mak. For the last 28 years, Salam has been completely reliant on his mother and sister. Accident, <laughs> Masih lagi sehat kerja. Kalau masih tak sehat itu adalah taklah yang tahu. The thing is, Fatima has been experiencing persistent pain in her left hand every night. Tangan sakit ni. Sakit tak? Sakit. Tadi yang kata dia buat pun sakit. Malam tak boleh tidur. Macam mana boleh jadi macam gini? Ini lah. Tak tahu apa jadi. Hari-hari timbul gini aja. Fatima is unsure of what caused it. But one thing is for certain. This hand is critical for the work she does. She has an appointment with a specialist. Fatima might have to undergo a surgery to drain out the fluid, but that might mean a week to a month of no work.